for the whole semester. If you're doing uh, pencil paper homework, if you're doing uh, my math lab homework, just do everything that's in there. <laughs> I picked these problems out. Just do everything that's in there. The, uh, the dates are not due dates. Those are just days that we will be in those chapters. Right? That's the tentative schedule for when we'll be in there. You also see important dates like the last day to drop, get a refund, the last day to apply for pass the pass, so forth. Right? July 4th is a holiday. I, for, I think I forgot to put that up there. I think you guys should know that. Um, so I have test days, stuff like that. I have a cool little one of my favorite little comics up here. Only in math problems can you buy 60 cantaloupes and no one asks what the hell's wrong with you. Who, who did this thing? Anybody know? This, the, all the fish here? <coughs> Same guy that did the weird stairways they used in the movie Labyrinth. The whole stairs that go all over the place. MC Escher. And it's going to final there. Um, and before I forget, I think I said this earlier. I can't remember now. About when homework is due. Homework is not late unless you turn it in after the day of the test. I'd much rather you turn it in consistently. And just to have a way to know if you're on track. After I lecture over something two classes later, you should be ready or close to ready to turn that homework in. The further you are away from that, the more behind you are, right? Does that make sense? Okay. I make the test day the day that things are due because a lot of us, we can only do shit on the weekend because we have a lot of shit going on during the week. I understand that. So I, I try to give you time to do that. Okay. So let's go back to the sheet. I just slap those together. Now, a lot of you guys I was walking around, I didn't say anything to you yet, but you only didn't go all the way. You didn't finish the problem. 3x minus x, 2x plus 2, all over x plus 1. And whenever you have a fraction problem, what's the last thing you do? Check to see if it reduces. You cannot cancel the x's, for example, right? No. What's the right way to do this? What comes out of the top? Two. Two. What's left? X plus one. What well, cancels then? X plus one. I love you guys. You're stereo up here. Huh? You guys maybe don't feel bad. Just remember, anytime you have a fraction, I don't care what it looks like. If I give you a number for x, this would be a normal fraction. This this is a normal fraction. Anytime you have a fraction problem, the last thing you do is see if it reduces. But it's kind of weird. No matter what I make x, except for one number, there's only one number this is not true for. Whatever I make x, it's going to become this whole thing becomes 2. No matter what I make x. What value of x can I not use? 0. I can use 0 all day long. I can't use negative 1 because it makes the bottom 0. You guys see that? I can't use x equal to negative 1 because it makes it undefined. Everything else, this would become 2. So real quick, just a one. What if x was five? What would this fraction be? What's the top? If x is five, it's fifteen over six. What's this top? Two minus fifteen. Is, I mean, sorry. Two minus five is negative three over six. Is twelve over six is Two. Hey, holy shit. So any value of x you use except negative 1, the answer is 2. So why is algebra difficult? Because what did we actually just do? We actually just added an infinite number of fractions together. Because what could x be? Anything except negative 1. Right? That's an infinite number of things. Holy shit. Okay. I went a little further with that than I had to, but... Could it be a negative 2? Could the answer be negative 2? I mean, uh, could the oh, x could x be negative 2? Hell yeah. X can only not be negative 1. It could be everything else. 
is E negative 1? E? Not negative 1? The answer to this was negative 1, right? Yeah, yes. 1 minus 2 times 1, negative 1 is. <laughs> All day. I like it. Just making sure. In part F, X cannot take on the value of negative 1. I didn't do that on purpose or anything. Okay. Totally separate problem. Okay. This problem, I know that some of you guys are not going to like part B because it's got fractions in it, but solving equations is bread and butter. Oh my God. 88, if you took it, 90, they all involve a lot of solving equations because that's the bread and butter of any math kind of stuff. So what's the first thing I do in this one? Distribute. I'll do that. Now here, the big mistake is people put this. What's wrong with that? Something very wrong. Positive yeah, negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. It's a really easy mistake to make. Equals 2x. What do I do next? Yeah, here I got negative x plus 10. And now you just pick a way to take your x's, pick a way to take your numbers. I can add the x, or I can subtract the 2x, it doesn't matter. So I'll get 10 equals 3x plus 4. Subtract the 4. 6 equals 3x. What are 3x's do? And they can plug that in to check it, like always. All right. I always say I don't want to play poker with a lot of you guys. You're like, I will not let you know how I feel about this shit. All right. I think I'd be really good at poker because I know all the math and all that kind of shit, but I have zero poker things. So. No, it's not good. Now here, there's a couple different ways to do this. There's a way I kind of prefer a little bit because it helps us when the bottom becomes an algebraic expression with like an X in it. You could multiply everything by the LCD immediately, and I'll, I saw a lot of you guys doing that. Let me show you a slightly different way to do it. If I make every bottom 12, when I multiply by 12, they just all cancel. So what does the first guy need? Four. This guy needs two. This guy doesn't need shit. So now I get 8x over 12 minus 10 over 12 equals x plus 7 over 12. So now when I multiply both sides by 12, the 12s just all go away. <coughs> So then I get 8x minus 10 equals x plus 7. It's the same thing you got if you just multiply by 12 directly. Alright, I like it. And now this should be easy. Subtract x, add 10, divide by x, so you get x equals 17 over 7. Subtract it 7x, add 10, 17, 17 over 7. What about part C? I'd rather, now, technically, if I just said solve and use quadratic on this, it's okay. I'm going to shed a little tear because what can you do with this? Factor. How do you factor this? Yeah, x, yeah, negative 6 and a plus 3 either way, right? Because you've got to add to be negative 3 and multiply to be negative 18. So technically, I really only want you using quadratic if it's not factorable. All right? That makes sense. Yes. And then what do you get for the two answers? 6 and negative 3, because those numbers make those 0. So whenever you have a higher power on your x, then a, higher, a different power than 1, you want to factor it because then it becomes two little easy problems. That equals 0 or that equals 0. 
stressors that actually like made mm -hmm. out like okay I want you to do this or you should do it, whatever. Yeah, I might. I might. Okay. Uh, when we you know talk about quadratic fact, uh, quadratic formula versus completing the square, then I would be very specific about which one I want you to use. Factoring though, that's just so quick. Quadratic would get you the same answer, but it would take a little while because it's one of my old professors said it's like uh, opening a walnut with a sledgehammer. It'll work. It's a little more than you need it. Makes a bigger mess. So the number three, you guys are really not going to like. Maybe. Yes, sir. Um, I have a question for TV. You have to do the multiplication of the factors and then the multiplication Well, the thing is, I want you to realize something. When I multiply this fraction by 12, 12's cancel. There is no 12 left over to multiply the top. I mean, I'm not multiplying by 12 over 12. I'm multiplying by 12. Because my goal is to make the bottoms go away. I like it. So it's 12 over 1. So when the 12s cancel, there's no 12 left to multiply the top by. Thank God. I like it. Yes, sir. On uh, 2C, how do you get the 6 and 3? So six? I need uh, two numbers that multiply to <coughs> negative 18, and they have to add to be negative 3. Oh, okay. I like it. So it's a little number game. You could actually do the little number game in Math 88, try to figure out what numbers make those true, and then that skill is useful for this trinomial stuff, right? All right. Get. Nobody's crying yet, but there are some yawns. So that's to be expected. I don't like making people cry. I've done it. I'm a math teacher. It's just part of the job. Um, so, who remembers how to do three? <laughs> what? Yeah, I like it. My stepfather, when he was driving, he was things like that. He would go, he would suddenly increase her speed by like, you know, like, you know, it's really funny. It's like, when it's like, that quiet, you know, you know, it's like, it's just like, it's like, it's like a bomb going like, Whoa! <laughs> that happens all the time, too. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, uh, don't worry, man. Uh, hey, yeah. I'd rather do that than just sit there like, yeah, and hold that thing. All right. So, the gentleman in the front row said master product. Some of you guys call it the AC method. I call it the surefire method because that's what it was called when it showed me. But you basically have to take the 16 into account. 16 times negative 3 is 48. negative 48. And I need factors of negative 48 that add to be 8. And it's, sometimes it's easier to start with the add to be 8 thing. What's true about the two numbers? They have to multiply being negative. So what's true about the two numbers? Can they be the same sign? No. no. That'd be different signs, which means they subtract to be 8. Give me two numbers that subtract to be 8, 10 and 2. Don't they subtract to be 8? Don't they multiply to be 20? No. 11 and 3. Don't they subtract to be 8? But 11 times 3 is 33, not 48. Okay, what about 12 and 4? Yes. Well, you're a So you don't have to find the factors first and check to see if they add. You can make them add and check to see if they multiply correctly. It doesn't, they just have to do two things. Multiply to be negative 48, add to be 8. Those two things. Who cares which one you make work first? So very often, uh, teachers teach you to make this long-ass list of all these factors in this number and then check each one. Well, that's bullshit. It's much more like a price is right. Higher, lower. You know? I missed it. If I change it, it's higher, lower. Oh, shit. Okay. It's a little easier to hone in on the answer. So who remembers what to do with these things, though? It's got to be 12 and negative 4, so it comes out to be positive 8. Negative 1. Negative. So the thing you do is you actually rewrite this problem, but you rewrite 8x as 12x minus 4x. So the whole point of this method is to make a 3 term become 4 terms. Because who remembers, what do you do with 4 terms? Group it, which is relatively easy. So now that I got four terms, these two numbers, it doesn't matter what order they're in. Those two numbers are the only ones that make the grouping work. If I put 10 and negative 2, grouping ain't going to work. What comes out of these two? 
4 x was here. 4 x. Put those together. Three. Minus 3. Minus 3. Plus 3. <laughs> now what comes out of these two? What comes negative out of these one. two? Negative one. negative 1. What tells me I'm on the right track? What tells me I'm allowed to do the next step is that these two are the same. I love it when people go one more step and they're not the same. That's impossible. What is the next step? Since these are the same, I can take it out. But the 4x plus 3 out, what's what am I left with? 4x, 4x minus 1. And that equals, well, it's not an equation, Jeff, thank God. We're done there. If it was an equal zero problem, I have to keep going. And I love it. Be careful. Don't make everything in the universe equal to zero. That's very bleak, for one thing. Can you put a minus thing? Yes. Or this? Okay. People in the back are like, hey. I don't normally use the projector. Just I normally am up on the board. But... All right. There are other ways to do this problem. This is the way I kind of try to show first. There's a method called the Texas Slide. I'm not going to show you unless you ask me in the office. I'll show you. That's the way I do it. Uh, what about part B here? Right, yes, you always look for GCF first. So if I take an X out, I'm left with. And who's this little dude? Perfect squares. Perfect squares. Difference? I call it a thank God problem or a thank your favorite beauty problem, whatever. Thank God. Or <laughs> God coffee, whatever. How do you factor this? X plus 7, X minus. You just cut them in half plus minus. It's too nice to believe. Yeah. Done. So if you stop here, you're going to lose points. If I said factor 18 completely, and you say it's 3 times 6, you're not right. You're not done. 6 can go further. So you've got to take everything out as far as you can go. How you guys doing? Man, today. All right. All right. What about part C here? What, what form is this in? Sum of cubes. So I relate, when I teach this, I relate it to Pulp Fiction somehow. Who's seen the movie Pulp Fiction? Do you remember the scene where you feel a little bad about laughing because the dude gets his head shot off in the back seat? So you guys are like, well, that's a movie I'll never watch. Thank you, John. I watch it. It's really good. And they have to call in the dude. I think his name is, is, is the wolf, the, the cleaner. All right? Okay. So get ready. How do I relate it to that? So W cubed plus 64, it wants to work like squares. How do squares work? I cut them both in half because they both have two of something, and I plop them down in each little parenthesis, and I'm done. Right? Plus minus. Uh, why is it plus minus so that the middle terms cancel? Right? Here, it's not going to work that nice because how many W's do I got? Three. And what, what's 64? Break it into three parts. Four, four, four. So this is where that little dude, big dude comes into play. So you can't put one and one. You can't put like W and W because that's only two W's. You got three freaking W's. So if I put one W here, I better put the other two W's there so that I get W cubed, right? And if I put one four here, same sign, then I better put the other two fours here so that there's my 64, right? Now some people might say, well, why don't you just stop right there, Jeff? Why don't you math people just calm down? Why don't you make everything hard? Because this ain't right. That's why. Right? Let me, let me see. Now watch. Is everybody semi-cool with this so far? It's a lot like squares, except there's three things. So how do I break three things? One and two. One and two. Right? But notice what I get. So I get W cubed and 64. That's awesome. But I also get 4W squared. I also get... Fourth cube, right? 
and I also get 16w. Do you guys see that? So I get w cubed, and I get 64, but I get this other shit too. So is this right? No, I need the cleanup dude. I need the guy who's going to get rid of this shit. So what's always going to work is going to be 4 times w, the product of these. 4w, and what's the sign got to be so it can cancel the shit I don't want? The opposite. What's w times negative 4w? Negative 4w squared. Dead. What's 4 times negative 4w? Negative 16w. Dead. So what am I left with? w cubed plus 64. So it's one of each, two of each, product in the middle. So hopefully that sounds vaguely familiar. Some of you guys might have been shown soap. Same sign, opposite sign, always positive. I'm not the biggest fan of like little mnemonic devices or little songs or shit. Because they, they, again, it makes you feel like you have to have them. Like it's really hard without them. And that is so not true. But I mean, if you were shown soap, that's great. But why has it got to be the opposite sign here so it can cancel the shit that you don't want? That's why it's got to be. So if this was a minus, this would be a plus. This is the middle dude is the cleanup dude? Yes? I got the answer except for I got ne negative 8 that you have 4 negative 4 that you Where did the 8 come from? Uh, 2 times A, a and B. That's how I was learned last semester. So the no, I think what you're talking about is like um, if I had A plus B squared. That would be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay. Yeah. That's not what I need for cubes. Okay. Yeah. In fact, the, the middle term will always be half of what it needs to be for it to factor. Okay. So the big dude will never factor. Well, I love you guys. You guys are all like, oh, my God. You guys are all decently cool? You guys remember this a little bit? No, not at all. Yes. Kind of lost me after the big two little dude. So you put the one and then the two. You ready? Let's do another one. All right. Let's see. What about eight x cubed minus twenty-seven? What's eight x cubed? Break it into three parts. Two x, two x, two x. Right. What's twenty-seven? Three, three, three. three. Little dude, big dude. Whenever I see a cube, it's going to be a little dude big dude. The little dude's a little dude. You can only handle one of each. A little tiny dude. Right? So I'm going to put a 2x in there, which means the other two 2x's have to go here. One, two. And what do I get so far? 2x times 4x squared is 8x squared. So real quick, real quick, before I finish this one. If I had x squared minus 25, what would you guys put? Why are you putting an x there and an x there? Because together they make freaking x squared. That's why, Jeff. Cut this thing in half. So squares are easy as shit because you just cut them in half and you're done. Cubes? Oh, shit. If I put one there, I better put the other two there. So overall, I get three of that thing. That's exactly the idea. 8x cubed is three 2x's. What up at the end here is going to be one, three. Same sign. And at this end, it better be the other two threes. So now I got my negative 27, right? So the only, the only weird part of this problem, really, one of each, two of each. The middle guy is the only weird part. The middle guy is going to be what sign? Positive. Positive. Three times two x. Three times two x. Six x. So the middle guy is always this times this. Opposite sign from this. And if you look, 1c is an example of little dude, big dude, canceling shit out. Then we got a t plus 27. It became a cubes. 1c. Look at that problem. Yes, ma'am. So is it always going to be Where are we at? Sorry? Oh, because the problem had a minus. So the little dude's always going to have the same sign as the original problem. And the big dude right here is going to be the opposite sign of that. So it can cancel stuff out. And where do you clean up? 
That's the dude. This is the cleanup dude. Oh, that's yes. So the real dude is negative or minus the uh, dude. Yeah, so watch this. 8x cubed minus 27 is this. So what would 8x cubed plus 27 be? It would be 2x plus 3. Or it's for minus 6x plus 3. All the numbers are the same, it's just that these would just change where they are. The answer to a cube always has one negative in it. It's either the little dude or the first thing in the big dude. That's the one that students hate the most because it's the one you can sink your teeth into the least. It's like a pure memorization of that. And that's why you guys hate it the most, which actually is good for me. I like that. You should hate memorizing shit. But here you just got to. See why it makes sense, though, and it makes it's easier to remember. You can see why it makes sense. Maybe, maybe. Yes? Why does the 3 times the 2x make sense? Oh, okay. In order to get the middle. All right. Let's do one more, and then I'll, I'll kind of focus on that, and then we'll move on. We're running out of here. Um, do one more. Let's do. Sure. We'll just do a nice easy one. W cubed minus eight. Let's make it plus. We just did a minus. Make it W cubed plus eight. Yeah. So W W W two two two. Now watch, now I, I want to focus on why the middle is what it is. This is W plus 2, no, no problem, right? 1 W, 1 2, I like it. What goes here? The other two W's go here, and the other two 2's go there. Now watch. What is the extra shit I get? I get a 2 W squared, you guys see that? Do I want a 2 W squared? No, because it's not in the problem. Whatever I write here better be the same as this. That's the idea. So I don't want a 2w squared, and I also don't want this 4w. I don't want those things. So what would I multiply 2 by to kill 4w? You guys can do it. 2 times what is the opposite of 4w? Negative 2w. And what would I multiply w by to kill 2w squared? I want w times something to be the opposite of 2w squared. Both of them need negative 2w to multiply by to become the opposite of the shit I don't want. And look what negative 2w is. It's the opposite sign of those two things. Always the middle dude is going to end up being this times this opposite sign because that's what's going to be the able to cancel the other shit you don't want. So it's going to be negative 2w in the middle. Because when you multiply 2 times negative 2w, you get negative 4w. It cancels that one. w times negative 2w, negative 2w squared cancels that one. Maybe. Yes? Here's what's interesting. If, if this sign is here, then in order for this times this to be the right thing, this has got to be positive. If it was negative, it would change the sign. It would be minus 8. It's not supposed to be minus 8. So that's why that last dude is AP, always positive. Oh, Yeah. All right. Okay, okay. By the way, I, yeah, I did mention, I mean, there's a, a factory methods hand a, a little sheet on my website if you want to print it out for yourself. It's got a quick reference at the top, and it's got an in-depth thing about each method and how they work. If you want it. If you're like, I don't need to know how to factor, you're insane. Factoring makes up about 60% of this class, so you probably want to know how to factor. Most folks are going to help you buy lettuce. Is that all your life is going to be buying lettuce? Is that all you're going to do in your life? I always love that. Most folks are going to help you with this. Well, there's more to life than that thing. Shit. <laughs> Factoring, I know if you don't know it, you don't know the reason to have it. But you don't know it. You don't know how important it is. Factoring is like so freaking important in almost every math-related shit after this. It's, it's like the, the fundamental thing to do first or very early in a problem is factor. We don't understand that. 
In fact, how do we deal with fractions and so forth? How do we deal with them? We factor the numbers, don't we? To figure out what the other guys need. Does that make sense? So one of the most fundamental things we do is factor numbers. And what are these things? What is, what is this? It's a number. If I just knew what x was, this would be a number, right? In fact, let me do this. Let me see if you guys can, 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 uh, can deal with me. Uh, I want to do this at least once with you guys. Notice how we got this. We got that this was 4x plus 3, 4x minus 1. Is that cool? We got that earlier. Is that cool? OK, now, somebody pick a value. Actually, let me pick a value first, because it might get a little wonky. Let's make x, uh, I don't know. Yeah, let's make x 2, just to make it a little bit easier to look at. What could x be? What could x be? What could x be? Anything. There's no restriction on this. You guys understand? It's not an equation. X doesn't have to be something specific to make an equation true, because there's no freaking equation. X could be anything. So I'm going to make it 2. Why 2? Because I wanted to. You could make it 3 if you want to. You can make it negative 11 over 16. I don't care. I'm going to make it 2. If it's 2, what number is this? 16 times 4 plus 8 times 2 minus 3. 16 times 4 is 64. 64 plus 16 is 80. Minus 3 is 77. What would this be? If x is 2, what is this? 4 times 2 is? Plus 3 is? 11. 4 times 2 is? 8. Minus 1 is? 7. How do you factor 77? 11 times freaking 7, right? You guess? So when you factor an expression, why is it kind of difficult? Because you're factoring an infinite number of numbers all at once. Because what could x be? Any damn thing. So if you pick x to be 11, do everything we just did, this will be a way to factor that. Always, because that's what you proved. We just proved that if a number can be written like this, it can be factored like this. Period. Hopeful. Mind blown, but understood? Yes, this is the point. This is what you should be asking when you're getting taught stuff. Right? Not just why we need this, because very often it's too early to show you why you need it while you're learning it. Right? Although I still love that question because we need this shit for a lot of things. Okay. I can't remember what got me on that tangent, but don't worry. Last problem. Oh my god. How did somebody do this problem? If you try to find the intercepts, you probably had a little bit of trouble. Say again? Why by itself? Why why get y by itself? I love it. What is the form for a line, the most basic one? Y equals mx plus b, where m is what? Slope. So why didn't they use the letter s? What is m all about? It's the French word for walk. It's marché, so they use the m. Marché, like march. So the French word for walk. So slope is like walking along a trail. You go up to a one, up to a one, it's walking up the steps. Right? All right, so just to let you know why. And why is B the Y intercept? I wish I knew. I don't know. I don't know if I ever knew. I don't know. Just because. Um, so if I solve for Y, I'll know the slope and the Y intercept. I'll know where to start and where to go from there. That's what the slope and the Y intercept do. So how do I solve for Y? I subtract 5X, divide by 2. So you should have with negative 5 over 2X plus 3. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> What's the form of the line? Y, not 2y, y equals mx plus b. So if it's not in this form, you don't know the slope or the y-intercept yet. So you can't just stop at 2y equals negative 5x plus 6 because it's not the form. Do you see what I'm saying? Is there something in front of the y? No. What's the only time I can look at a line equation and tell what the slope and the y-intercept is if y is by itself? That's what that line equation says. Do you guys understand? Yeah. 
That's all it says. Does it say a y equals mx plus b? Like a could be anything you want it to be? No. It says solve for y and everything falls into place. That actually kind of kicks ass. Later this semester, we'll see how that works for circles. If I put circles in a certain form, I'll see the center and the radius, because those are the two most important things. Where do I, where's my middle, and how far from that middle do I go? If I put the equation in the right form, I can see those things. Because there's always got to be some relationship between a function or a equation and its graph. There has to be. So what does this tell me? Where do I start? What's the y-intercept? Zero, three. Zero, three. One, two. And where do I go from there? Some of you guys are like, I'll tell you where you can go. No. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Over two. Not back two. It's got to be negative slope. Yeah. And if you miss a point, just make it big. I like it. Now, in general, I would like some idea of, of scale, right? Because you might have to change the scale to make the make it fit. Yes. Oh, uh, I, I skipped a little step here. Subtract the five x, right? And then divide by two. Yeah. So it would look like. So if I subtract five x, I get two y equals negative five x plus six, and then divide by two. Cool. Woo! You guys all right still? It's a little ambitious, I know. But, and again, I'm hoping that by going over these and by you guys doing it and talking with other people, maybe it's kind of come back up. Maybe it's been a while since you last took math, so it's kind of buried. I understand that. If you don't use it, you definitely lose it quickly. Okay, so now we're gonna do, let me do this. Let me see, before I kind of go off in my little uh, review of stuff, is there anything specific, any idea? Uh, do you want to cover factoring? Do you want to cover um, negative powers? Do you want to cover anything from this you want to see, you want to talk about more broadly? I'm thinking factoring should be. A huge one. Right. Okay. Let's start there. 